Well, hello everybody and welcome to BIS HQ for another episode of Virtual Church where you'll hear your favourite hymns, you'll hear a top five and you'll hear live requests as well. You'll also hear lots of other things like organ music and this wonderful organ where we are today in virtual Blackburn. <clears throat> I've been in real Truro Cathedral recently in fact, I managed to acquire a nice, um, a nice gift in my travels there. A, uh, a glass statue of the cathedral. But we're back and we are now at BIS and we are using Blackburn Cathedral today. So we open today's uh, virtual church with there's a wideness in God's mercy, like the wideness of the sea, uh, to the wonderful tune by Maurice Bevan, and the words were by Frederick uh, Faber, and re requested uh, by one of my patrons, Alan Matthew, who says, um, Corvedale by Bevan is a wonderful tune to these words, and the irregular pattern uh, with the f uh, extra last half um, tune repeated, emphasis the text. Sorry, that doesn't really make much sense. And the, and the irregular pattern with the extra last half tune repeated emphasises the text. Pure brilliance, uh, Alan says. Well, it's a great tune, a really great tune. Well, it's good to be here again. So let's, um, let's get on, on to our next hymn, which is another um, really, uh, really wonderful uh, tune and really wonderful words. Arguably some of the best um, words um, in the Bible, I think, um, the Magnificat, Mary's song. So this is a paraphrase of Mary's song. Imagine, just imagine all of the settings that, um, the musical settings that have been inspired by the Magnificat. I think it's one of, surely one of the most set to music pieces of text in the Bible, I think. Um, but it's coming from, um, Lanfair, or that looks like a Welsh name, so it could be Llanfair. <laughs> I think that's a, that's a, that's a uh, made-up screen name. Who's requested, tell out my soul, the greatness of the Lord, to the tune Woodlands, uh, tell out my soul, is, of course, a paraphrase on the Magnificat, hence why I was talking about the Magnificat. And uh, Llanfair says, a great tune that is rarely heard during VC. Well, funnily enough, we had this uh, tonight at Romsey Abbey, where I was playing for Evensong. Um, so, we ha I, I, it's the, this is the second time that I've played it this evening. <clears throat> Thank you very much, uh, Margot, for your uh, 1999. Always love to listen. Well, Margot, I always love to have you with me. <laughs> Got Bobby here already. Okay, so, uh, tell out my soul, the greatness of the Lord. Unnumbered blessings give my spirit voice. Tender to me the promise of his word. In God my saviour shall my heart rejoice. Are you going to behave, Bobby? Please do. Okay, let's have a, let's have a crack at this then. Let's have a crack.
the procession hadn't quite finished. So I just needed to play on for a little bit at the end there. <clears throat> One of the skills um, that organists need to have is the ability to have the eyes, have eyes in the back of your head and in the side of your head and everywhere, basically, uh, because you just had, you don't have any help. So many times um, I've, you know, had to play on after a hymn like that, uh, when if the collection hasn't finished or for whatever reason, and the conductor has no idea, you know, they're sort of conducting, conducting the hymns, which, yeah, um, and they're just oblivious. And so as, as the organist, you just need to be looking, obviously at the choir, uh, listening to the choir, looking at the altar, um, looking at the order of service, looking at the music, looking where your hands are. It's a proper sort of like a coordination workout. And no wonder we, um, we go grey and lose our hair. <laughs> so that was requested by Hlanfair. Are you in with us? If you are, um, then do say hello. Bodybuilder uh, Vicky has just said, uh, Blackburn just burnt my ears. Well, I do apologize for burning your ears. Um, you should hear it in here, my friend. It's, um, it's epic in here. Um, so yeah, Blackburn is very good at burning your ears. You should hear, if, you have, if you haven't heard it in real life, in the cathedral, it's unlike anything else. It's amazing. It's a beast, but a friendly beast, I think. It's like an excitable terrier. It just gets very excited very easily. So um, thank you very much for requesting that. Uh, Jack McCormick is uh, up next, who has requested, Oh love, that um, will, oh love that wilt not let me go. Those are just words that I just, I'm not used to saying in that order. <laughs> oh dear. All right, so what am I searching for? I'm searching for, oh love uh, that wilt not let me go. I can, I can say it now. Well, now I've said it, I can say it. It just doesn't, doesn't roll off the tongue very easily. Uh, Jack says, this Sunday, the 2nd of July, is my confirmation. Well, congratulations. Um, I have waited a long time to be confirmed. Um, uh, uh, waited a long time to be confirmed in my own church. So this day is a day of excitement and thanksgiving for me. Um, as I'm sure is the case for all of the confirminands. Good word, that. Uh, my favourite hymn has always been, O oh love, that wilt not let me go. So I was hoping you could play it. Many thanks. Well, Jack, I will play it for you. Um, words are uh, by George uh, Matteson, and the music is by Albert Lister Peace, and the tune is called uh, Saint Margaret. Uh, so it was written in the the late 19th uh, century, um, and the, I guess the hymn reflects on the um, the uh, unrelenting love and faithfulness of God, even in times of darkness and doubt.
some interesting um, sight reading going on in that hymn. I think, I think I've done, and I will call myself out here. I think I've done, in the, in the first verse I did this. I think I've done that before. I don't know why. I don't know why. I, well, I think to be, look, in my defense, the quality of this scan is not. Can you see? You can just, actually it looks clearer to you guys than it does to me. But what's that big gap there? Look, in the, in the, in the stave. Why is, why is there like bits missing? I find that off-putting, actually. That's my excuse anyway. <laughs> uh, Jack, I hope that was okay for you. Um, it's, it is a wonderful tune. We have had it before and it's, um, uh, it's a very sort of reflective hymn. And as I said, I think it reflects the unrelenting, the unrelenting love um, of God in times of darkness um, and sorrow. Oh, love that wilt not let me go. I, uh, I rest my weary soul in thee. I give back the life I owe that in thine ocean depths its flow may richer and fuller be. There's some lovely words in that one. Okay, so Benjamin Yao is up next. And Benjamin Yao has sent in a hymn which I thought, uh, oh, I know that one. That's absolutely fine. That is definitely in the BIS hymnal. However, he, he threw me a bit of a, a boogie, as it were. Or a bogey. <laughs> and um, let's just say he threw me a curveball. So he's requested a hymn which we'll all know. I heard the voice of Jesus say, come unto me and rest. And like you, I was thinking, okay, that's cool. We've got Kingsfold coming up. Kingsfold's good hymn. And it's definitely in the hymnal because I've played that many times, but no. Upon uh, closer examination, um, uh, Richard, uh, 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 Richard Widdicombe, loved Mendelssohn Sonata uh, yesterday. Awesome. Richard, that's, that's so kind. Thank you so very much. That means so much to me. Really means so much to me. Um, the recital yesterday, uh, uh, um, on, sorry, on Friday at Truro was a, a pro bono recital. So that will really help. So thank you very much, Richard. I hope, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'm putting on um, the individual items uh, on BIS, use, having used my own equipment to record it. Uh, and to uh, both visually and with the audio. Um, the Mendelssohn went online today, and then I'll put the, uh, the Books to Huda on, and then the Willen on at various points this week. So please do watch them. If you haven't watched the Mendelssohn um, already, um, please do. I put it on today, this afternoon. I'd really appreciate your feedback on that. Richard, thank you very much. Um, so, uh, Benjamin Yao, he's requested this, 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 this wonderful, uh, well-known hymn, um, I, I, I Heard the Voice of Jesus Say, uh, but he says this, In recognising Bill Ratey's time, uh, time-stamping work last week, here is a tune that is in his favourite 6-8 time, in Bill's favourite 6-8 time, which I have recently come across but sung to another set of uh, words. Um, so the tune is called, this is quite a funny name, Drink to Me Only With Mine Eyes. I think that's the longest title of a hymn tune that I've ever come across. I guess, quick um, comical question whilst I'm playing this. What's the longest hymn title, tune name, you can think of? So this one, Drink to Me Only With Mine Eyes. Seven words. That's surely got to be one of the, uh, a winner. <laughs> so let's have a listen to this. This, I, this is absolutely brand new to me. So I'll, um, I'll assume it's new to you as well. Let me know if it's, um, if it's not new.
So what's the general consensus there? I think some people were recognising it. So Eileen says it's not a hymn tune, but a folk song. Uh, ben Wallace says, uh, sorry, I know the words to this song very well. Uh, I can't quite imagine it till I heard the voice of Jesus say. Um, ben, what were the words that you know to this tune? Um, what else did we have? Uh, Mrs. Balfour is saying something. I think the words are from a poem by Ben Johnson. Is that right? Does it doesn't say that on the on the? Oh, what the so the other words you mean? Because the words uh, I heard the voice of Jesus say are by um, Horatius Bonar or Bonar. Drink to me only with thine eyes, Richard. Are the, are the, are those are the words then. Okay. I'll have to um I'll have to ask Josh Josh Wilson who's producing tonight. What who did anyone come up with the longest hymn tune name? <laughs> I think I'm in the lead. I think I've got I've got the one. I think I've found the longest hymn tune name. Although actually, it's a it's a, not really fair because um, this is uh, according to you and this this screen here this is just an old folk tune. But according to this hymn book, that's what it's called. <laughs> so thank you very much, Benjamin, and thank you very much for your uh, time stamping, and of course, Bill Ratey, who's been doing some as well. So guys, what I'm going to do, uh, just the, the, the time stamping team, I can, I've got a list here of what I'm playing. Um, I, I'm going to start copying and pasting the hymns from the pre-requested bits into the description of the video and uh, also the, the hymns from the top five as well. So all you'll need to do is just put the time stamps next to those hymns and then if you can, uh, get the hymns from the, the live section at the end and then, of course, any organ music as well. So, one more hymn to play. Well, and then, and then I will tell you about what this announcement is. In the title of this virtual church, it says, An Announcement. And I must tell you what it is. I'm pretty excited by it. Carmen Foster is up next, who's requested a hymn, um, which apparently, this hymn speaks to me, is what Carmen says. And it's a gorgeous, gorgeous hymn. Uh, well, a very well known uh, tune and wonderful words as well. Um, it's Come Thou Holy Ghost, sorry, Come Thou Holy Spirit, come, and from thy celestial home shed a ray of light divine. Come, thou Father of the poor, come, thou source of all our stone, come within our bosoms shine. A uh, tune is called Veni. Sancte Spiritus. Beautiful, beautiful uh, tune, this. I think most of you will know this, surely. Give me a thumbs up if you know this tune.
I apologize. I think um, my brain's half asleep. I didn't quite get the chord there entirely correct. This is what, uh, this is what I think I wanted. Um, didn't quite come out like that though, did it? I think that's what you get when you've had an excessively busy few days. Oh, hello, I can hear some squeaking back there. Is that you or is that Charlotte squeaking? <laughs> what does it sound like? I make no comment. <laughs> My pedal cam is a bit wonky. I have just fixed it. Oh. Right, so uh, thank you very much uh, to Carmen for requesting that one. Just make sure that I um, am on top of... Oh, Gregory? Gregory Wonders, who's uh, sent in $20. Thank you very much. Would love to hear Come Labour On. Oh, yes, that's a good tune and a good hymn. I um, am a huge fan of the choir of Trinity College, Cambridge, and their um, director of music, Stephen Layton, is about to leave, which I'm very sad about, actually, because he's, um, he's perfect for that choir. He gets a sound out of any choir that no one else can. I think there were very few people in someone like him, someone like his league. Um, I can name a couple of others, like Barry Rose, but, um, who get a very unique sound. But Stephen's leaving Trinity, and he had his final um, even song there a couple of weeks ago. Maybe, but I think it was a couple of weeks ago. And one of the hymns they had was Come Labour On, which I was surprised about, actually, um, in, in a good way. It's um, music is by uh, Thomas Tertius Noble, um, and the, the words are, um, there's one point where, where it says, well done, well done. I think, ah, oh, that was, that's just so appropriate. <laughs> Anyway, we'll get to that in a bit. So um, Daniel Kubaki is uh, up next. He's waiting for a bit more Gibbons. The Daniel, I don't know why, but I, I don't, I don't blame you, Daniel. But Daniel is um, currently researching all of Gibbons, Orlando Gibbons' hymn tunes. So um, if you if you want to know anything about Gibbons, uh, the wonderful English Tudor composer, particularly about his hymns, Daniel's your man. He's a scholar. And he's, um, he's researching all of these tunes. The tune today is uh, Song 18. Um, and it's to the tune, uh, sorry, it's to the words, um, Hosanna, music is divine, when in the praise the psalmists join and each good heart is warm. That's a mouthful, isn't it? Yea, joy is sweetest, so renewed and all the rites of gratitude are rapture to perform. Wow, quite hard hitting words there. Um, words by Christopher Smart. Um, what does uh, Daniel say? Do you give us any in insight into this? He says, a somewhat obscure Gibbons hymn, says our um, Gibbons scholar. This one is not in the NEH. I love this tune. I don't know why it isn't more popular. Well, Daniel, let's do what we can to make it a, just uh, uh, more popular to 200 and nearly 30 people watching. So that's pretty good, isn't it? 230 of you are going to hear this tune, possibly for the first time. Again, give me a thumbs up if you know uh, this hymn tune, because I, I don't think I'll be able to give you a thumbs up, because um, I don't think I know it. So I, I'll tell about the tune. I'll solo out the tune for you. Oh, who's this? Oh, it's Bobby again. Bobby, can you make your mind up? I um, in, When I was giving my recital down in Truro, I met quite a few subscribers down there, um, as I did the previous week in Llandaff. It's always nice to meet you. Um, and one of, the, one of the things people always talk about is this one and her sister Nala. Stay there, stay there. You stay there, okay?
Very interesting that when I asked you to give me a thumbs up, if anyone knows it, not a single thumb went up. So that's very interesting. I didn't know that at all. Daniel, you obviously found that in the hymn book. Which hymn book did you find it in? But well done. Thank you for sending it through. I think it went down well though, didn't it? I think people enjoyed that one. Um, okay, so now let's just have a little wee announcement, shall we? It's pretty cool, this. Pretty cool. So some of you, some of you um, choir nuts, you, you choir nerds out there, because um, I'm one of them. Uh, so I think we're in good company. We'll know about, what do they call it? Um, uh, is it Anthem World Cup or something, or Canticle World Cup, where um, people will vote for their favourite anthem or canticles or our men on Twitter um, and on Facebook, etc. And then they'll sort of go through various rounds, have knockout rounds, and then it will often get down to a, a couple of very, very fine pieces of music, which then have to battle it out in this World Cup and get votes. So you all know what I'm talking about, right? So I thought it would be, it'd be really interesting and uh, pretty, um, well, exciting, uh, yes, but also insightful to see what we could come up with in terms of hymns. So we're going to actually have a BIS Hymn World Cup. So we're going to start off with quite a long list of hymns. And this is going to start this week. Okay, so we need to crack on. So I'm telling you, so you've got a heads up and I'll announce it across all of my social media uh, over the coming days. But we're going to start with a big long list of hymns and then through the course of virtual church um, we'll have knockout um, stages. So we'll have five hymns in a group. I'll play all five and then in the chat live we will be able to have a poll and be able to put all of those five hymns and the hymn with the least votes gets knocked out. So it's your chance, really, uh, to, to find the definitive all-time BIS favourite hymn. We've had that before. I think the number one hymn um, through, uh, through uh, requests alone was Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. But that might not win. It might be close, but Kofen might win. So look out for that. That's going to be uh, this week. And we're going to have the final, so the final um, knockout, so the final few hymns, and the winner will be chosen and voted for live. This, is, this will all be done live um, at the end of August uh, during the Organ Festival, which is going online at the end of August. So the Sunday in the Organ Festival week will be the final of our hymn World Cup. What would be the winner? Hmm, I, I have no idea. Do you know what could be the winner? I've got an idea. Caroline's got an idea. Oh, what's your idea? Do you want to tell us or are you going to keep it secret? secret. Oh, she's got, going to keep it secret. Oh, we'll have to wait to see what Caroline's idea is. <laughs> so there we go. That's, that's pretty cool. I'm pretty excited about that. She's saying that we need to make a prediction uh, as to hide it on the envelope and then hide it in an envelope and then when the, when the winner's announced, we can see whether we were right or wrong. I don't know about that. That's, that, that's too high a risk because we could be way off. They, no one can hear you because you haven't got a microphone. And it's... What? She's saying, can we do a sweepstake? That's a good idea. Could do. Yeah. See, the, all these thoughts are flowing out now. Sweep steak, perhaps. Okay, so now James, uh, what's this? Uh, Brady, Brady Kilman um, requested um, possibly last week. So, so apologies, we didn't get to play it last week, uh, Brady. But we'll definitely have it right now. Brady has asked for onward Christian soldiers uh, marching as to war, or insert your own modernized version of that text here. 
Um, onward, but those are the words that I was brought up with. Onward, Christian soldiers. Let me find it. There it is. Uh, marching as to war with the cross of Jesus going on before. Christ, the royal master, leads against the foe forward into battle. See his banners go. And then the refrain is onward, Christian soldiers marching as to war with the cross of Jesus going on before. Um, and I've written down here. Um, so it's. Uh, the tune is um, is called St. Gertrude and it's composed by Arthur Sullivan. Uh, but the hymn calls um, us to stand firm in our faith uh, and follow Christ with courage and determination. I think that's basically what it, what these words are trying to conjure up. So this feels to me like a marching band. You can just imagine soldiers marching in this tempo. It's perfect for marching. And I think Arthur Sullivan had, had, a, had a marching tempo in mind when he wrote this. So let's all imagine a procession um, with, with uh, going alongside this tune. Richard Fitzgerald has just uh, donated 20 Australian dollars, I think that is. Um, and I really like your hat, Richard, genuinely. Uh, totally agree with the quality of Trinity College Cambridge. I regularly listen to their Evensong broadcasts and they are all broadcast, aren't they? They're fantastic. So Onward Christian Soldiers for Brady Kilman.
I can see that some of you are making use of my new emojis. They're pretty particularly louder. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, this organ doesn't go much louder than that, uh, apart from when you couple through the shamards and the tuba to the grate, which then makes it extremely, extremely loud. <laughs> what a great hymn. What a great hymn that is. Bear with me a sec. Let's just have a look over here. I don't know whether... Has our favourite reharmonizer done anything with that? Uh, St. Gertrude. I don't think there is anything in... There is something in here. Should we have a listen to what he's done? Should we have a listen, Brady? And then you can all give me the reharm emoji. <laughs> so, here we go, let's fire it up again. Let's fire it up again. Well, that's quite something, wasn't it? <laughs> I think that was one of his better ones, actually. There's a lot of good ones in there, and I think that's one of the better ones. Wow. I'll have to make a note of that. So when I play that again, I'll have to remember some of those harmonies. They're really cool. <laughs> oh, excellent. Anyway, Brady, hope that's okay for you. Let's push on to our next request, which is coming from uh, Ben Van Elderen, who has requested um, a um, a great tune, a great hymn. Uh, we have a gospel to proclaim. So the tune, Folder. And Ben says this, this was one of my brother's sight reading exercises again. Okay. So I, when I was young, when I was um, 12 or 13, I used to get a hymn book. I didn't have an iPad, obviously, back in the 90s wasn't they weren't even thought of hmm. Microsoft were, did, were sort of playing around with tablets weren't they and stuff like that but anyway uh, and I used to open the hymn book randomly put it on the piano and sight read that hymn so Ben or Tim you're in you're in good company I used to do exactly the same thing uh, but Ben says but Ben continues to say I liked how the tune seems to be circular in a way and it also goes quite high um, it must be a tough one for the congregation to sing. Yeah. It sounds especially well, in my opinion, on a good big organ with lots of reeds. We've got loads of reeds here. So I hope you'll uh, be able to use your louder emojis uh, a lot during this play the playing of this hymn. Kind regards um, and a lot of thanks for all the effort you and Caroline and the producers put into VC. Well, that's very kind. Thank you. You're welcome. So it's, we have a gospel to proclaim to the tune Fulda. Um, and I, I mean, I could, I could probably just, I don't really need, need raw sawn for this one, but we'll, we'll have a little bit of reharm as well, because it's a great tune with great words. So let's have a go with, we have a gospel to proclaim. <laughs>
Verse four is the best verse there, isn't it? Tell of, because verse three, I'll lead into verse three, you have tell of his death at Calvary, hated by those he came to save in lowly suffering on the cross, vox humana, for all he loved, his life he gave. No, fair enough, yeah. But then you go on to tell of that glorious Easter morn. We all know the Easter story. He rose, didn't he? He came out of the cave and he was alive again. Amazing. Amazing. Empty the tomb for it. He was free. But then it gets even better. He broke the power of death and hell. That we might share his victory. And what stop is there better to word paint breaking the power of death and hell? This one. Yes, you've all got the 32 foot emoji, <laughs> as Richard Setting has, uh, has, has written, and as Brady has written as well. <laughs> wonderful, uh, wonderful words. Cool, right, Ben, thank you very much for sending that. Now, on to another Ben, who is um, an LTL. Uh, ben, that is a long time listener. Ben's been with us since, um, you could say, actually, Ben's a VLTL, a very long time listener. Ben's been with us since the very beginning, I think. Um, and it's wonderful to see people like Ben return. So that it really gives me a, a lift, actually, to see people coming back. So thank you. But Ben has sent in, uh, ben has sent in a high-quality scan, as usual. He's very good at doing that. Uh, it's letters... Where is it? Let me, let me, let me arrange my things by date order, that's the easiest thing to do, because the new ones are at the top, there, there they are. Let us love and sing and wonder. Let us praise the Saviour's name. He has hushed the Lord's loud thunder. He has quenched Mount Sinai's flame. He has washed us with his blood. He has brought us nigh to God. Personally to me, not so well-known words, but the tune is extremely well-known. It's uh, All Saints Old. Now, quiz question to you. Without using Google or without using your local search engine, which famous hymn did um, John Newton, who wrote the words to this, also write? No cheating. As I'll know. I'll know. <laughs> Morris, just in time for a filthy serpent, you came at the right time. You know how we roll here in BIS, don't you? Filthy serpents galore.
well, and that, with that, that brings us to the end of the pre-requested hymns now. So we had nine hymns there from Alan Lanfair, Jack, Benjamin, Carmen, Daniel, Brady, uh, Ben Van Elderen and Ben Wallace, who sent in that one just then. Of course, I can't get anything past you. And I tell you, if we do a pub quiz, I want you on my team. You all got the answer. What other hymn did John Newton write? Of course, it was Amazing Grace. So I can't, I can't, you, I, I, I can't get anything past you. You're far too knowledgeable. Cool, 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 cool. Let's now have our top five, which today uh, comes in uh, from another LTL, a long time listener. Um, uh, I apologise if I don't quite get the pronunciation right of your name. Johan or Johan Ostlund. It, um, Johan is in the chat, I know, as I've seen you chatting away. Please do say hello, Johan or Johan. So let's just now have, he's got a wonderful list here. So he's um, Swedish, I believe, and these all have a Swedish uh, connection. But actually, they're all well known, so you'll, you'll know them all. Let's just have a little bit of. There you are. Hello, 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 hello. Are you well, my friend? You've got a four next to your name, so that's. Oh, that's medium. That's M T L, isn't it? Medium time listener. We should have that actually. We should change it to um, S T L, short time listener, medium time listener, long time listener. And what's that? What's 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 longer than long? <laughs> right, let's just have a little bit of peace by Bach, uh, just to send us on our way into the, uh, into the top five. A little ditty by a great man, JSB. Just the prelude from the prelude and fugue in um, G major. I haven't got a quiet 16 foot reed on this organ for the pedal, which is a bit of a blow. Let's just... Um, Get a couple, they're not going to be loud enough, but oh well, oh well. I suppose what I could do actually is bin, bin the swell, have the 16 foot read on the swell, take that down to the pedal, and then use the grate and the choir as they play them. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. I'm not playing that one. <laughs> um, okay, so this, this, is, this, this is just three, three minutes and then we'll go into our top five. Bear with me.
And with that, we now swiftly move into our top five today. So thank you very much, Johan. Just, just remind me, am I, am I pronouncing the J or is it a silent J? Uh, so here we go. So hello, Richard and Caroline. This is Johan Ostlund, a regular at BIS, and this is my top five. I have been thinking about sending a top five for quite a while now. The problem was that I know most hymns by their Swedish names. Then someone in the chat gave me a tip about hymnary.org and I think I have managed to find them all. That's lucky for us. However, one of them, number five, couldn't find in any hymn book, uh, so maybe skip it. I'm going to skip number five. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. So we succeeded. We tried and we found it. So it's number five. Um, so I, he, um, Johan actually uh, gives me the, it's, a, it's with a J to Johan and the, uh, so it's, okay, so um, Jehan, there we go. So I'll say Jehan. Jehan actually gives me the Swedish titles, uh, but so, which obviously I'm not going to get very close to. The first one is, uh, uh, Blot en dag, which translates to day by day. So I'll, I'll just quickly find that, which is here. So actually the translation is day by day with, uh, and with each passing moment, strength I find to meet my trials here. Trusting in my father's wise bestowment, I have no cause for worry or for fear. He whose heart is kind beyond all measure gives unto each day what he deems best. Lovingly, it's part of pain and pleasure, mingling toil with peace and rest. Okay, so what does um, Jehan say? This is a very popular hymn in Sweden, especially at funerals. Um, in the last hour, you ask yourself, was that all I got? The hymn gives the answer. And he says, yes, it was. What did you really expect? At least my interpretation with a smiley face at the end. Okay, so this is number five in Jehan's top five list of favorite hymns.
beautiful tune, day by day, and with each passing moment. That was number five in Jehan's uh, list. It was a great start. A great start indeed. So let's move down now to number four. Let me find it in my, what do you call it now? Uh, um, I did, why is it not? Why is it not? In my iPad, hopefully it's in my iPad. I saw, I scanned all of these. It should be there. Um, what's going up to? I just need to go and get my um, ELW. I thought I scanned them all in. Anyway, very, um, very helpfully, uh, Jehan has given me all of the hymn numbers in the ELW. So if you have the ELW to hand, the next one I'm going to play is number 613. No, I didn't scan it. I don't know why I didn't scan that. That's strange. Okay, so what does he say about this? So it's... Um, uh, thy holy wings, O Saviour, spread gently over me, and let me rest securely through good and ill in thee. O, oh, be my strength and portion, my rock and hiding place, and let my every moment be lived within thy grace. Another end-of-life type hymn, but I find it's comforting. When your short time on earth is coming to an end, it's time to spread your wings.
I think we've got a Swedish contingent in with us tonight, which is good. Um, so that was, for those of you who just joined in, uh, Thy holy wings, O Saviour, spread gently over me. And that was um, a Swedish folk tune. If you are still using your, in fact, I might as well stay in here with you guys. If you are, if you have an ELW to hand, the next hymn is number eight hundred and fifty-six. Very well known here on VC, I've had many, many times. And Jehan says this: Elvis fans may recognise this as an Elvis hit. I didn't know Elvis covered this version. They covered this hymn uh, with his own version, but it's actually originally a Swedish hymn. Most Swedes will immediately associate this hymn with the Salvation Army, and it's pretty commonly sung in street corners <laughs> by the band playing in the street corner. Yeah, absolutely. Well, what is it? Well, it can only be, O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the works thy hand hath made. I see the stars, I hear the mighty thunder. A filthy serpent there perhaps, my power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, O Saviour God, to thee, how great thou art. And this is number three in Jehan's list. A good list, sorry? Okay. Um, okay, so there we go. So this is number three. Let's go on. Great list so far. Thank you very much, Jerry Martin, for your 49.99. Just saying thanks for an awesome VC <laughs> with your number five. I think Jerry is an LTL, a long time listener. <laughs> I've actually made some new emojis. So if you get to beyond five, I think it's beyond five, it might be beyond six, you get something very special next to your name. Let's go.
fantastic tune. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder. There's been corrected on my pronunciation of your name, so I think I need to be saying Johan. Johan, 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 Johan. I'm not so, quite sure exactly, but... Oh, hello Charlotte, how are you doing in your sling? The cavalry's arrived. Oh yes, they're... Including Nala, Oh yes. that's why. And Nala's around as well. Well, She's Bobby's right. already been um, centre stage on two occasions, walking all over the keyboard. So, what is going on? Why is there claws on my arm? Right, another beautiful, well this is a, this is a beautiful, very simple, but very short Swedish uh, folk tune now. Number three in Johan's list is here. Children of the Heavenly Father safely in his bosom gather, nestling bird, nor star in heaven such a refuge ever was given. Don't talk to this one about birds. Hey Nala, do you want me to tell them? Or do you want to tell them? No? Cats will be cats, put it that way. So this is number two, and what does Johan say about this? He says, it's another very popular hymn, often played at funerals and baptisms. Have I got two cats on my, the bench with me now? This is outrageous. Look, people, this is, this is just getting out of hand now. Getting, this is getting uh, out of pause. You guys are going to be a bit jealous. You got to we need to hear oh, number party. two in Johan's list. Down here and Hugo's up in bed. Uh, so this is, look, this is a very serious hymn because it's, it's commonly played at funerals and baptisms. So, so that's an uplifting occasion. Uh, a common mishearing of the lyrics, especially uh, among children, um, is the line um, Tigar Khan, apologies uh, about the pronunciation. Uh, what's he say? Safer can no one be. Is Oh, so it's often misheard. <laughs> so safer can no one be, basically in Swedish, it's often misheard as the safe shrimp. Hmm. Well, <laughs> to be fair, you know, if you say safer, you know, safer can no one be, you could say, yeah, that's safer than a safe shrimp. <laughs> it's poetic. Shrimp. <laughs> anyway, so let's have a look at, let's listen to this. This is number two in, um, in Johan, Johan's list. Gorgeous, beautiful tune and a very well known um, a Swedish folk tune. I haven't given you a microphone, no. There's a danger that I might run out of charge, but they're down, they're down here.
Wasn't that gorgeous? Really gorgeous. But obviously it wasn't quite gorgeous enough to make number one. So what pipped it to number one, I wonder? Well, let me read you what uh, Johan says before I tell you what the hymn is. See if you can guess it from his introduction. This one has been played already on BIS at least twice. Um, by far the most popular Swedish hymn of all. A hymn about springtime, the beauty of God's earth, creation of life, and the resurrection of everything that has been dead during winter. This one was played at my mother's funeral uh, since she had requested it that her funeral should be a celebration of the rich life that she had and not about losing a loved one. So for me, this hymn is both happy and sad at the same time. Well, a, a funeral can absolutely be a celebration, can't it? A celebration of someone's life. If it's someone's had a really wonderful life, a life well lived, then it is a celebration of, of a life. And I think this is a celebration. So it is, how marvellous God's greatness, how glorious God's might. To this the world bears witness in wonders day and night. In form of flower and snowflake, in morn's re resplendent birth, in afterglow at evening, in sky and sea and earth. Um, and this is, uh, um, well, the tune is called Den Blomstertid. I'm sorry about that. De, de Blomstertid, uh, newcomer. So if someone with access to that wants to write it in the chat, you can then see what the tune is called. But in the ELW, it's number 830.
Well, there we go. Thank you very much, um, Johan, for sending in your top five. Can we all give uh, Johan a uh, round of applause? Because it was such a wonderful list. It's always wonderful to hear hymns um, that are not always so familiar to us. And of course, it's always wonderful to hear hymns uh, from somebody from a different country, which is wonderful. Um, it's amazing that you tune in to me. I, the mind boggles as to why you tune in to this Englishman play these hymns, but I'm very grateful that you do. So thank you for your uh, top five, um, and thank you for bringing all of those to our attention, and of course, thank you for uh, your introducing of them as well. It's now time for me just to remind you that you, you can send me your top five hymns for any occasion. It doesn't need to be your favorite top five. This is what I need to keep stressing to you. It can be, um, your top five hymns for baptism. It can be your top five hymns that you heard when you were at school. Your top five hymns that you heard this morning at church. You know, just whatever. It, it's a really um, insightful way for us to get to know each other better. And don't forget, um, you must write about why you've chosen your top five hymns. Richard does like that. A few people have sent us lists, but they haven't written any explanations and Richard does like to be able to talk yeah. about the hymns and why you've chosen them because it's all about the congregation of, of VC as much as the hymns. Yeah, absolutely. So if your so, hymns haven't been played yet, that's probably why. So as you send them in again with an explanation as to why they're your top five. Did you all hear that? Because you're not my friend up. Um, so yeah, so it's a, an, ex, a, an explanation as to why you're requesting each hymn is critical. Um, I've, I have had a few um, uh, several uh, lists which an email comes in and it is quite literally just um, a list of five hymns with no context so I, I can't play those so if you if I haven't played your top five yet and you've sent me your list without a context any, re any any sort of reasoning that's why and also a couple of people um, I can think of Matt Leach who's a regular listener Oh, yeah. He sent us a list, and I think two of the five or three of the five weren't hymns. They do all have to be hymns, just it helps. this item. So, yeah. It's uh, uh, top five hymns. Yeah, so. so that's why that one hasn't been played. It, um, so, Matt, if you're listening, if you want to, to um, resubmit five hymns, we'll happily play them. Brilliant. We did make a, an exception once for Ian Garden, didn't we, with the Magnificat, the Song he's of Mary. Naughty. Yeah, but that Ian Garden. Uh, yeah, we shouldn't. Um... He's a bad influence. <laughs> Right, Ian Garden often puts just um, pictures online of him enjoying copious amounts of amazing food. I think, and, I think he uh, might and be enjoying wine. some food tonight. I don't think he's in the chat. He's very lucky. We'll rib him later. Right, so let's go into our live requests now. So I think we need to play Gregory Maybe Wonders him. On. I thought you'd already played it because I heard you talking about Stephen Layton earlier and I just assumed you'd played it, but Josh put me right. Like, thank you, Josh. No, no. Glad well, someone's on the ball. I think... <laughs> No, I, I was I was talking about it because I saw him mention, um, request it, and I thought, oh, that reminds me of yeah. uh, Stephen Stephen Mayton's final service. So here it is: it's come labour on. Who dare who dares stay idle on the harvest plain while all around us waves the golden grain? And to each servant does the saviour say, "Go to work today. Go to work, son." And then verse four, come labor on, no time for rest, till glows the western sky, till the long shadows over the pathway lie, and a glad sound comes with the setting sun. Well done, well done. I like that bit. So this is by, uh, it's by Thomas Tertius I'm Noble. Sure that's why Stephen Layton chose it for the words, isn't it? Because I'm sure that's no, why because it they, extremely hard. No, they didn't have this translation. And actually, those, oh. those words weren't, weren't in the order of service, interestingly. Oh, right. Okay, so yeah. it's not why he chose it. Then. But it's a great tune. Great tune. He might have... I don't know. Let's have a listen to it. This is a wonderful tune. It's for Gregory Wonders.
It's such a fantastic tune, isn't it? Because did anyone else watch the um, the final service of Stephen Layton at Trinity College Cambridge, which was broadcast? Now I have to say it was a very emotional service. It was very very well sung. Um, Howell's Saint Paul's service. Um, the anthem was. What was the anthem? Can't remember what the anthem was now. Um, I can't remember what the anthem was. Uh, but it was a really, really powerful service. Oh, well, Eileen, you just sent me $50. Thank you very much. Kofen. Ooh. Ooh. Asking me to play Kofen. Oh, you know me too well. <laughs> okay, so where are we up to next? So. Um, Sandra Spears would love to hear I Come to the Garden. Have we got that? Uh, Josh, you Josh is just um, awesome. I think. So my producers, I'm very fortunate to have such amazing producers. Um, it was Bird, Quamodo Cantabimus. But Josh, I, your email doesn't have any content. Oh no. Well, let me give you another one. It was bird, Quamodo Cantabimus was the anthem. Let me just check for you. Oh, it was. Yes, it was. It was bird. It, it, of course it was. William Bird. Yeah. Isn't he celebrating 400? It's his anniversary year this year. Yes, top. it is. Um, right, so, let's give you instead. Well, let's go to Eileen's. How shall I sing? Whilst well, we're waiting. We're doing them in order. Carmen. Come thou fount of every blessing. Tune Littleton. Right. Um, sorry, Carmen, I think you had a bit of issue with the super chat, but it, it worked in the end, so thank you very much. Thanks for sharing. What happened? Just the first donation didn't go through. Oh, uh, okay. So, yeah, Carmen, we have received $20, so thank you very much for that. So, this is for so uh, come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy, never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise, etc. The tune is called Nettleton. And this one's a bit of a hit. This is a nice one. So let's let's have a sing song. Sing song? Let's have a sing song. <laughs> yeah, I like this one. Yeah, it's alright, isn't it? Yeah, it's good. I didn't know this one before BC started. No, it's good.
Gorgeous little tune that, uh, Nettleton. Can you see that okay? Hmm, yeah. So what's the, what's the story of Nettleton? It just feels like a... Um, traditional American melody, it yeah, says. It's just had a, uh, it feels like a, a folk song, doesn't it? That sort of it has that feel about it. Nettleton. Um, by John, John Waith. Wyeth. Wyeth, Waith. 1813. So you can see, uh, can you see right. that that's coming through? Let's have a look in my email and go to um, uh, this, this one that comes in from Sandra Spears. So thank you very much, Sandra, who's um, re requested live. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear. The son of God discloses and he walks with me, he talks with me. He tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we uh, tarry there, none other has ever known. And it's simply called Garden. I think this is in the ELW. I recognise it. It doesn't say so in Hindu, actually. Oh, right. It looks like it. Okay, well, let's um, have a go at this one. Um, thumbs up if you know this one as I'm playing this. fingers have stopped working. <laughs> Let's try again, come on. Did I get any thumbs up from that one? 
One person knew it. Two. Oh, a few. So Carmen Himnally yours, Dennis Carlson. I don't believe only three people knew this. I think people just don't listen to what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest. Um, so I, I did ask you to give me a thumbs up if you knew the hymn. So Eileen just gave me a thumbs up. <laughs> oh, and uh, Keith has just said, not many likes tonight. Well, I do hope that's because you're, you, you've just forgotten. If you are watching and you, you are enjoying, um, please just do click the like button. We've got two, over 230 of you good people watching. Um, just click the like button. It's just so easy to do. And it just it, it helps me and, the, and it helps the video. I really, I I really appreciate I it. I hadn't clicked the like button, but I have now done so. Well, we're, so. we're 145, 149 <laughs> now. So if we can get to over 200 likes, that would be fabulous, because I'm sure there are lots of people watching who haven't clicked like yet. Nala likes it, but she hasn't got a phone I really, I really do appreciate it. So the final hymn, I think, mm. um, for it's tonight for it Eileen. is... Eileen's request. It's the 35th anniversary of her ordination as deacon. Congratulations. And her colleague, mm -hmm. uh, Moira Williams, 30th anniversary of ordination. Of a priest ordination. Also for all of those celebrating significant anniversaries this weekend. Absolutely, yeah. that's very kind. Thank that's a very nice donation. message. Thank so, you everybody for your donations tonight. Um, thank you, yes, thank you indeed. It's very, it's very generous, thank you. Eileen, where in the, where in the world are you? Where in the world are you? Where, where is your parish? Where, where, where are you? But you see, Request is one of the absolute um, best so hymns. This, this hymn was also featured in Stephen Layton's last service was? at Trinity College, Ooh. Cambridge. These were the two hymns, this and Come Labour On. Is there a th Neither of which are sort of traditional New English hymnal hymns. No, they were both. Well, no, the no. Um... She's in County Cork in Ireland. Oh, in Ireland. Oh, fantastic. This one was written um, in the mid 20th century, but the Come Labour On was written early 20th century, I expect, by Noble. Can you make sure she doesn't look over the over the, that drink, please? Wow, well, it's not. I can't. I, I know, can't but wait maybe to do can you, maybe just move the drink whilst I'm playing this hymn. Because I can't drink it whilst playing. I should think ahead to these all these catastrophes that could happen whilst I'm playing. Come on, then let's have the one of the greatest hymns ever written. I think. And then we'll, um, so give me a thumbs up if you know this hymn, okay? <laughs> I bet I get lots of thumbs up now.
If that's not a fitting way to celebrate your anniversary, I don't know what is. <laughs> Eileen's Indeed. happy that she's giving you claps. Ben 30, loved it. 35 years of ordination. Well, congratulations on 35 years, Eileen. And to her colleague for 30 years as a priest as well. Absolutely. Here's to another 35 years, I think. <coughs> right, ben so. Hart, who oh, is Alan Hart, another just... very long time listener. LTL. Um, she, I did notice in the chat, made me chuckle earlier. She said, There's a lot of testosterone in the chat tonight with all those louder emojis. <laughs> <laughs> testosterone. Yeah, there is. But Bobby and Nala are making up for that. I think they're hungry, actually. They're loitering. I'd love to think they that's... want to see their friends from around the globe, but they're also looking at the biscuit tin lovingly. I think they're probably quite hungry. I think that's probably what that's more like it, isn't it? They're hungry. <laughs> um, right. Well, what should we have for a volunteer? So, so we've had two had requests, two have we? Requests. Ben Van Alderen has asked for um, okay. the Lawrence Caldecott piece from Call for Composers, Aria, I think. Yep, a lovely and, piece. And, um, oh, that was lucky. You'd, you've pressed general cancel. I have, yes. Bobby's on the manuals. It gives me a chance to plug the Call for Composers, actually, doesn't it? And Daniel Kubaki asked um, for Rhapsody No. 3 by H&H. &H. Well, I haven't got it on the iPad, so you'll need to go and find it. Oh, no. I could be there for, a, could be there for hours. That's not... Yeah. You might, I, never fight, you might never see me again. You might have to come and drag me out. For no, the I think the good, the good news ankles. is I haven't played it for a long time. So, so it's, I think it'll be on the shelf. Yeah, Everything I've played in the past year is on the floor, in a pile. Shall I go and get a copy but of Call for Composers? I think it's on the shelf. So, uh, thank you very much, Bill. Uh, bless BIS Virtual Church. Yes, indeed. Bless it, because it, it is fantastic. Um, and Jim, I, I missed yours. Jim, uh, thank you very much for your $20. All, it's all, there's, everything goes into the BIS um, account, so it's all safe. Yes. Oh, look, who's that? Who's that? Someone who's brushed his hair. <laughs> No, I haven't got quite the right angle. You need to look down. You need to be so, moody. Just a quick. Um, so, this is actually the first BIS publication, and we are about to publish a second. We are in the process of um, getting uh, music for the second publication uh, through the BIS comp organ composition competition. So, all winners and um, runners up, so all shortlisted people, uh, all p pieces will feature in a new volume which will come out either later this year or early next year. So two plugs really, if you want a, a copy of this, it's a wonderful collection of uh, pieces written um, by people who subscribe to BIS basically. Um, there are, how many pieces in here? I, have, I, I forget. 25. 25 pieces in here which are how all... How did you forget that? Uh, all <laughs> Original, it's, so you it's have a bargain. Twenty-five organ pieces. It's been, yeah, and the quality is extremely high, really, really high. It really is. It's professionally produced. Um, so it's on the, B, the BIS website, beautyandsound.co.uk. As uh, actually, as Nightbot has just written, so you click on that, and then you can find what the composers. It's must, got a special binding that doesn't close we'll send, annoyingly. We'll send you a I copy can, of that. I can vouch for that. The binding's good. <laughs> It's important. We chose a the, special binding. So I'm going to play a piece from it, one of the more beautiful and lyrical pieces by Lawrence uh, Caldecote, um, born in 1983. Wish us luck. We're going to go into and the jungle that's the music library. If, if we don't come back in 10 minutes, I'll, I'll, send Bobby up I'll there. Send, I'll send the live chat to come, on, to come and find you. <laughs> this is called an aria, um, and this was written by Lawrence um, he actually wrote this in response to the um, terrorist attack that we experienced in this country in uh, July 2007 um, in London, which was pretty hideous, actually, very hideous. Uh, and he wrote this in response to that. So it's gorgeous. So Aria by Lawrence Caldercote, which I, you'll you'll. If you don't know this, if you haven't heard this already, then you're in for a real treat. It's utterly divine. And you can buy it from the BIS shop.
while I remember, um, there was some chat while you were playing Co-Fen. Everyone said, oh, I'd like to hear Caroline sing this. Well, you can. I did sing it on BIS. Richard did a top 20 hymns in 2021, I think. Right. And did you sing this one? I sang Co-Fen. Did you? And I actually took a couple of takes because it's not one that I sung as a child. And I tripped up on some of the words, so I had to do it in two or three takes. Well, I, I know um, what it's like to trip up on words. I do that all the time, so you're in good company. I made a few mistakes in Co-Fen because it's not one that I've known from, from way back. Um, but yes, I, what I'll do is, just for those of you that didn't see what I've written in the chat, I will find the video and I will uh, put the link to the video of me singing Co-Fen in the, a comment. the comment for this stream. Yep. Yeah. yeah, it's quite an old video now. It's, it's, it's 2021, at least two years old. Absolutely. Older than Hugo, I think. Okay, so Daniel Kubaki has requested a piece of organ music by Herbert Howells uh, called Rhapsody. This is number <clears throat> This is number three. By the way, it wasn't on the shelf in alphabetical order. Oh. It wasn't. This is... Oh. <laughs> luckily, it was near the top of the pile. This is number three of three published Rhapsodies, although uh, there are now four published Rhapsodies. If you like this Rhapsody and you would like to hear the other two, so Rhapsodies number one and two, all three Rhapsodies have been recorded by yours truly uh, and are on BIS. If you search for search on YouTube for Howell's organ music, uh, you will see an organ album which I recorded of this great composer um, of his organ music. So it was written in uh, 19... Well, during the First World War, whilst he was visiting Sir Edward Bairstow in York. And this piece was inspired by um, zeppelins flying over and the drone of a zeppelin. A very low drone, just going, coming closer and closer and closer, going overhead, loud, and then going off into the dis uh, distance. So you can imagine the pitch of the drone just um, whirring away, getting flatter and flatter as it goes into the distance. And Howells um, depicts that effect by these um, des descending um, chromatic notes. The whole piece basically just descends. <laughs> I'm lo looking at the music now and a lot of the, um, the, the direction, um, particularly on the first two pages, um, the way the notes fall on the page is they actually all, they all go down. So just have to listen out for that and to see how, to see how he, Herbert Howells, is um, word painting this wonderful uh, piece of music. So this is a Rhapsody number four in C sharp minor. I hope I can play it. I haven't played this for a long time.
Well, that, thank you. That was a, that was, that was a, that, it is loud. Um, although not as, not as loud as it would have been in the cathedral. Uh, so that was the uh, Rhapsody number no. three by Herbert Howells, um, played on the wonderful sample set of Blackburn Cathedral. If you have enjoyed today's virtual church, please do click the like button. I can see more people watching than there are current likes. And if, if I'm doing something wrong, um, if, you don't, if you're not clicking like because I'm not doing something, if I'm not playing enough hymns for you, then please do get in touch and offer me feedback. Um, but I would very much appreciate it if you did click the like button. Before you go, yeah, I don't know if we can find this in time, but it was Canada Day yesterday and we've got a lot of people in the chat from Canada. Jim is from Victoria, British Columbia. Okay. Sean is from Surrey in British Columbia. I just wondered if we could try and find O Canada. Your own internet on your iPad is probably easiest to... Uh, well, to why didn't you find it whilst it, I was puffing around well, in the house? Because I wasn't sure if you'd be able to play it. But you can chat, you can do some waffle while we find it, can't you? We, we'll, we'll try and find it, we can't promise because it, 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 um, national well, anthems are... What, what's the first word, of the first line to it? Oh, Canada. What's the first line, folks? What should we search okay. for? Sorry, we're um, not experts in... in no, this English. is... No, this is um, Bad. This. This should have. You should have got this ready whilst I was oh, um, playing. It wasn't. You know, if it had been a Prima Press, it would have been. All, all sorts of, it's all right. Nala's here. She's. Looking. Oh, Canada, our home and native land. There we go. I've been to Canada. My cousins live in um, Vancouver. And I went there and they taught me to ski. It was great fun. Um, yeah, I had a crash course in skiing and I went to Whistler when I was good enough for it to be worthwhile. We went on the Sea to Sky Highway, which I thought was an amazing road. You'd like that road, Richard. Oh, it's literally it's right on the edge of the Atlantic. Pacific, Pacific, through the Pacific Ocean. It's very dramatic, the Sea to Sky Highway. It climbs up into the mountains, very scenic. Uh, you found it? No. Uh, not yet. Not yet. I, I think Vancouver is an amazing place because they have they have mountains for skiing and winter sports, and then in the summer they also have beaches. <sighs> so it's kind of got everything. It's just white rock. Is it white rock? I think that's where my cousins lived. Um, it's, it's something for everyone. Ah, John has said, I hope it literally wasn't a crash course. Well, there was a bit of crashing. Obviously, when you're learning to ski, there's always a bit of crashing that goes on. Oh dear. But my cousin was um, very strong. He was a bodybuilder, so he just kept lifting me up every time I fell over in the snow. He'd just lift me up and I'd have another go. It was very funny. I learnt quite quickly. I think I might have it. There it is. Nala's on the manuals and approval. There she goes, Nala. Oh, it's trying to focus on Nala. We've got it, folks. For Canada Day, which was yesterday, to all our listeners in, um, in Canada, here we are. Here we go. Well done, Richard. Let's, let's have this, then. O oh, Canada, our, our heart, our home and native land, true patriot love in all thy sons' command. With glowing hearts we see thee rise, the true north strong and free. From far and wide, O oh, Canada, we stand on guard for thee. God keep our land glorious and free, O oh, Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Okay, let's have a, let's all sing this pay, uh, patriotic him for our uh, viewers and listeners up in Canada.
that was worth playing, wasn't it? Thank you very much, everyone, for watching. Um, thank you for all of your donations tonight. And until next time, we will both, well, all, all of us, <laughs> will say good night and a cheerio. Cheerio. Good goodbye, everyone. Take care.